Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're gonna look at the autopilot of the Beechcraft Baron Golf 36. Uh, for some of you it might look similar to uh, several of the other airplanes, for example the uh, Cessna 172 as I would say a similar system. Uh, and the autopilot options can be found in this section, right? So uh, let me move a little bit to the right. So here you've got the main button where you can switch on the autopilot. You've got the flight director. Then you've got the heading, the altitude, the navigation, the VMV mode, the approach, uh, the back course, the vertical speed, the no nose up and down, and the uh, flight level mode. Uh, so let's uh, first make sure that we got permission to take off yes we got permission to take off so the first thing we're gonna do is I would say assign an altitude then the reason we're doing that uh, prior to the flight is that I would say it's in most cases it's easier to do so and to do that we need to turn this button and as soon as we turn this button you can see that the value is being updated here so you might ask yourself hey can we also change the one 100 values, yes, that can be done by, let's say, turning this small knob. Uh, let me uh, reset the view. Uh, let me uh, use my headlight to have a look at it. Uh, come on. So here you can see that the alt button has, I would say, a small knob and a large one. The small one is for 100, the large one is for the thousands. So currently we set the altitude now to 5,200 feet, which is fine, although it might be a little bit too high. So let's uh, decrease it to uh, 3,200. Oh. Then I need to <laughs> turn the correct one, of course. So we're gonna turn to, uh, no, 1,000 and then I'm gonna increase 2,000 feet, which is fine. Um, so after we did that what right, you can and already enable the the flight director button uh, the IP button we will enable it uh, once we're airborne uh, so let's uh, let's take off because we already got permission to to take off so we're gonna remove the parking brake and we're gonna increase the throttle Oop, it's not sure what it's doing a little bit bumpy. Pull back the stick slowly. A little bit further, and we're airborne. So once we're airborne, right, we're climbing to, I'd say, a little bit higher altitude. Would say it is nice. Can reduce the throttling a bit so that it's not uh, in the red zone. And now it's time to enable the autopilot. So, and to do that, we simply press the AP button and since we want to climb to a certain level and that's something we need to keep in mind because as you can see slowly on the right side we're descending so we need to or we can use the FLC button that's just one of the options right and as so soon as we did that you will see a few things changing so first of all the AP option is being green now which means that the autopilot is being switched on other than that it says roll which means it's still busy I would say going to the correct altitude and the FLC button means that we uh, did the flight level change button, we enabled that option. The other option of course was to use the vertical speed uh, option in combination with the uh, nose up or nose down. And that will result in exactly the same. Uh, in some cases you might choose to use the uh, vertical speed button, I will show you uh, in a few minutes. And currently we didn't do anything for the, uh, I would say, direction we're flying, right? So we're simply flying straight forward, we're climbing closely, and we try to keep a speed of 104 uh, knots. 
uh, so we and I would say to reduce this uh, value what you need to do is you need to uh, turn off the FLC mode then reduce speed so for example to uh, 100 for example then press the FLC button again and then it will reset the value uh, back to the uh, new value which you just flew right so keep in mind that you shouldn't go full throttle and then press uh, the FLC button because it will then the aircraft will try to stay on that specific speed and that might I would say result in uh, I would say other issues keep in mind that also that you still need to perform the throttling yourself so it's not that the aircraft will do auto throttling for you no you will need to do it yourself but it will limit itself uh, to 101 in this case so we're gonna prove it so let's do some turns and to do some turns we need to use the heading button and to use the heading button I will also put my light on it because it's easier and we can simply turn this button right so currently it's pointing to what is it three almost 360 degrees so let's change it uh, so and then you'll see the blue marker changing direction so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly exactly to the west so as soon as we are there which is the case now what we can do is we can uh, press the heading button and what will happen is keep an eye on the screen because the aircraft will now slowly start turning and we'll simply turn to the direction which we uh, which I pre-configured and then we'll continue could be that it goes a little bit from the left to the right but yeah that's kind of expected So, other than that, what other options do we have? Well, currently we're still climbing to 2,000 feet, right? You can see it's not going very fast. So let's use the uh, vertical speed option. So we're gonna use, we're switching on vertical speed and then we're gonna select nose up, which will change this value to 500 feet per minute, right? So oh, a little bit too much. So you can see it's here set to 500 and here it's also showing you it's climbing to 500 keep an eye on the uh, on the speed you might need to increase throttling temporarily to avoid that you're not uh, let's say hitting the stall moment and your aircraft is falling down again currently we're not using the the cdi right so it simply says gps and route right that's where enr stands for um, but we are not using it as we speak we can use it, but before doing that, we of course need to select one of the beacons, and that's what we're gonna do in a few minutes, uh, as soon as we're, I would say, hitting the 2,000 feet. Or well, actually, we can do it right now, right? So what we can do is we can use the nearest option, and the nearest one gives us the airports, uh, which we're close to, and here it says ILS, right? If you're happy with that, uh, we can press uh, enter, and then say uh, back which will give us the information um, but of course we want to I'd say program it into our flight plan and to do that what we need to do is either we press the FPL button or we press the direct button and if we press the direct button uh, it will automatically populate the airport in this case which we configured and then we can simply say okay uh, activate that will change the direction directly of this arrow and as you can see the flight plan has also been updated now how to use this one well since it's already configured on gps we don't do need to do much we're simply gonna fly away a little bit further and other than that or once we're i would say other than that might be wrong wording if we're I would say a little bit further from the airport uh, then we're gonna uh, change to the nav mode and nav mode will in this case use the GPS because it's the compass has been set to GPS 
and it will turn the aircraft in the direction of the airport. As you can see, the 2000 number is starting to, I would say, blink, which means that we're coming close to the uh, configured altitude. So let's wait till it's there. You can see also the altitude has been set to 2000. And other than that, you can see that the heading has now been set uh, as one of the modes. You can see that it's slowly pitching down. And if once we're at 2000, it's fine. Uh, don't forget to reduce throttling because the aircraft will still go into the uh, same, I would say, speed as we uh, did. So reduce it a bit. So now let's switch to the heading mode or sorry to the nav mode so you're gonna press the nav mode now and what will happen is that the aircraft will simply start to turn into the direction uh, and as soon as we're I would say flying into the direction uh, which is uh, what is it uh, 60 70 80 90 so 70 degrees it will I'd say fly straight towards the airport So which buttons did we, didn't we discuss? Well, we didn't discuss the nose down. The nose down does exactly the same as the nose up, only in the different direction. So it will, I'd say, decrease the altitude. Uh, the VMV option, uh, that option, if I'm correct, will use the uh, altitude configured on the flight plan. And we have the approach and the uh, back course, which all have to do with the landing and approaches. Uh, so all have to do with uh, Yeah, approaching an aircraft or an airport using ILS, for example. As you can see, we're now flying straight towards the uh, airport. So we're going to reduce throttling a bit. And we'll pick up the course from here, right? So if we would open the, uh, the VFR map, you will also see the course here. And simply fly straight into Rotterdam Airport. Now this is also where you need to think about, okay, is this what I really want or do I want to, let's say, fly one of the approaches? So if you want to fly one of the approaches, you need to set the flight plan, right? So go to the flight plan. Uh, well, let's do it on the right screen because we're focused on this one. And here it says Rotterdam, and then we can set, select the approach, press uh, enter. In this case, it doesn't know it because we didn't select an airport. So sometimes it doesn't load it. If it's if that's the case, then make sure that you configure the destination airport. Uh, if it takes some time before it's loaded, just like we uh, just figured out, then uh, it's fine as long as it loads this data. So what we're going to do is we're going to change uh, this one to... Uh, to change it uh, let me it's always a nightmare with these options I'm gonna change it to uh, VOR 24 now we need to change the approach come on you can do it small knob to get the list and then use the large knob to move it then press enter now it has loaded it so we're happy and then enable it again and scroll down the list uh, well we can say directly activate and press enter so it will add the approach and as you can see the aircraft directly starts to, I would say, adjust its directions uh, because we need to fly to a different uh, GPS or sorry, different beacon. We now need to fly to the ROT one. So it's going to change the direction and once it's did, done that, it will fly to it and it will fly the uh, plan or the approach which we configured. Uh, so I can show you the approach. 
So we're currently located here. Uh, here's the airport. Uh, ROT is a little bit further to the east side. Here's ROT. So we're flying to ROT and then based on that we're flying to some other waypoints. Then we're making the turns and then we're going to use the VOR uh, to let's say make a successful landing. And that's also uh, where you can use the approach mode. Uh, the approach mode is of course uh, mostly used for uh, ILS approaches. Um, so keep that in mind, we now select uh, a VOR approach, uh, but we can, can simply change it because the approaches are exactly the same. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, so select approach, ROT, no, we want to change this one. a large knob again to move it from the 24 fine for me then change the transition again as we're going into the different direction because mass is, in, is on the uh, let's say on the seaside see sometimes it's really a challenge to uh, <laughs> to control the airplane or to control the system twenty four that's okay okay move one position then use the small knob and then change it again to ROT that's fine now we're going to press the button again. So press the button again. Then say activate. As you can see, it didn't change much. Uh, changed a bit, not, not too much. Um, so once that's done, uh, yeah, we, will, we can continue to fly, right? Um, it will take us automatically to the waypoints where we need to go to. Uh, as you can see, it starts to be a little bit dark already. So let's make sure that uh, all the uh, lightning is enabled correctly. Uh, it's a challenge with this airplane because you see that some of the lights are behind the uh, steer so what I normally do is I will simply use the uh, button to move around the airplane and then it eventually it will bring you to the uh, buttons here so let's switch on the uh, lights on the dashboard uh, taxi lights not really needed uh, flood we can enable it so it's a little bit more clear uh, landing lights are not needed for now but we need to what we can already enable them uh, just before we forget to uh, do it on the landing and then you've got the uh, the taxi one and taxi one we, we also don't need it uh, for now only if we start to taxi and here you can see the uh, the airplane already so lights have been switched on as you can see and if we would uh, move a little bit You can already see uh, part of Rotterdam, right? So we can see the uh, Erasmus book which has been added as part of uh, World Update number 4. And now it's time to, I would say, probably uh, tune in to approach. And then we're going to request Rock IFR. Approach beach craft Alpha Sierra X-ray Gulf 4 miles southwest of Rotterdam. Request IACOR to Rotterdam, ready to copy. Beechcraft Alpha Sierra X-ray Gulf is cleared to Rotterdam Airport as well. Squawk 5241. Beechcraft Alpha Sierra X-ray Gulf cleared to Rotterdam Airport as filed. Squawk 5241. Beechcraft Sierra X-ray Gulf read back correct. Radar contact 2000 feet. Altimeter 2 niner decimal niner two turn left heading 070. Proceed on course climb and maintain 
So we've been assigned an L2 drive, so then you need to make those changes, so you can change it using this map. But let's wait. Already what I expect. So we now accepted the VOR DME approach, but if you want to say have a different approach, then you can simply say two. And if, for example, we, we want to use ILS, so we're gonna say, okay, hey, we want to use ILS. for ILS uh, rod transition and then uh, regress the approach Beechcraft Sierra X-ray Golf would like ILS runway 24 approach Romeo Oscar Tango transition Beechcraft Sierra X-ray Golf you are 4 miles southeast so that's fine as you can see So that's fine, right? We we, we simply get permission. Uh, we're on the correct, uh, I would say, altitude because uh, AT mentioned, okay, hey, stay on the current heading and altitude. Uh, we got clearance to use uh, runway 24 ILS via the ROT uh, transition. So now it's simply a matter of, I would say, flying or let the autopilot fly it, fly us. So we're gonna acknowledge the instructions. We're already 2000, so that's fine. Let's press the uh, the B, right, to reset the altimeter to make sure that we're flying correct altitude. You can see the nav mode still on. Uh, it does also show here. It does show, it does show GPS. A little bit too much. It does show GPS here, which is fine. Um, what you will see is that uh, at the end it will switch to the localizer. It's part of the GPS. So it's going to make a slow turn. And then it does everything for you. So right, it's I'd say easy is might be not the right wording because you still need to know how to manage the autopilot. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, in the meantime, I also see that my flaps are still let's say in the incorrect phase. So let me uh, reduce the flaps, which will also increase the speed a bit. And uh, what you will see is that this sometimes the airplane reacts on that right. So it if normally if you would say change the the flaps it will uh, either I would say bump a little bit down uh, but the autopilot will also keep an eye on that and it will automatically fix it uh, the only thing which the autopilot in this aircraft doesn't do is keep an eye on the uh, speed you're flying so that's something you need to keep an eye on yourself uh, so what are other things I'm just thinking out loud what I can tell you well there's actually not much more compared to these buttons right so these are the buttons which he, which are really important uh, and these are the buttons which are responsible for let's say managing the autopilot functionality uh, you can see that they're not on the uh, left machine uh, there are also not really buttons here which you can use for that piece or for that specific usage um, 
so you really need to use the right one and if you can't use the uh, right one well then you've got an issue um, because then you can't manage the autopilot and you need to do every, everything manually uh, some people prefer to do everything manually right that's fine uh, for longer flights maybe autopilot is I would say the way to use So we're closing by uh, to the next uh, waypoint. So let me show you the VFR map, right? So we're flying here currently. So let's keep on the GPS tracker. So we're gonna go to uh, Echo Hotel 258, which is this one. And then we're gonna fly to Romeo Romeo, which is uh, this one. And then we're gonna make a turn to Echo Hotel 253. And then we're following this line uh, back to the uh, runway. So currently we're 3.5, 3.4 miles even from uh, Echo Hotel 258. Everything looks fine. It's uh, It became a little bit dark already, as you can see. I'm switch on the, uh, the light because we switched on the... Uh, light of the cockpit itself in some cockpits there's a way to would say increase brightness uh, but for this one I don't think there's an option to do that you can see in some cases some of the parts of the cockpit are really I would say there's some room for improvement for illumination so you can use the headlight uh, so here's everything right here are the lights and there's there's no way to increase the uh, density of that in some cases there is so keep that in uh, mind so then the question is when can we switch on the approach mode well the approach mode you can switch it on whenever you want although would I would say it would only do it when you're really on the approach uh, what it will do is it will try to capture the glide scope uh, and I can show you that piece so we now switched on uh, the approach so it will do two things it will switch the VOR so it will switch the v CDI and it will try to load the GPS or 3 the ILS information so currently we're switching it back to nav mode because we want to use the uh, navigation mode switch on you can see still see that the GS is being uh, displayed here which means uh, glide scope is might be there but it, not, it did not detect it right because if the glide scope is detected you will see all kind of additional uh, things popping up here uh, using the approach once it has selected the glide scope this will turn green so once it has intercepted it that's the correct wording in the meantime it already went dark you can see another airport here probably that's a skippable airport uh, or airport is in another direction uh, let me go inside the aircraft so now we're at Romeo Romeo which means that the airport should be uh, somewhere in that direction so it's slowly turning and as you can see everything is I would say really smooth there, there's nothing you need to do so it's really autopilot uh, things of course what you need to do because throttling is not part of the autopilot is you need to decrease the speed you need to manually uh, do the stuff with the um, flaps that's all outside of the uh, autopilot scope in larger aircraft there are some, some other things for example there's the auto throttle functionality for example in the A320 you can use the MCDU to program the uh, speed and then it will really reduce the speed uh, when needed uh, 
can see that it started a little bit too late with turning but it will make the attack correction so eventually it will fly directly to the uh, to the waypoint you can always check the uh, waypoint here the information here right so echo hotel 253 that's the next one and that's uh, the ETA which can be seen here is 1.22 18 17 16 right it goes really fast GS ground speed 107 knots so that's probably something we want to do is we're gonna decrease speed already a bit Tune into the tower. Rotterdam Tower, Beechcraft Alpha, Sierra X ray Golf, 11 one miles northeast inbound ILS runway 24 approach. Beechcraft Alpha, Sierra X ray Golf, Rotterdam Tower. Cleared ILS runway 24 approach. Altimeter 290 decimal 9 2270 and 3. I'm gonna acknowledge it. Cleared ILS runway 24. Approach Beechcraft Sierra X ray Golf. So the aircraft will start to turn soon, as you can see. It's also switched back to VOR 1. Can you change it? Yes, you can change it. Is it really needed to change it? Uh, no, you can leave it as it is in most cases but to make sure that we're really I'd say going correct we're switching it on you can see that the aircraft does something weird because it doesn't follow the line so that's due to the fact that it made that switch to a different uh, CDI and then it doesn't follow the line anymore so that could be a challenge in this case uh, so we're gonna switch on the approach because the approach in this case does the same right it will make hard corrections as you can see So let us see what it does and if it works. And as you can see, it works because it brings us back to the line. case what you can do is you can use the CDI to switch but you can only switch between uh, VOR 1, 2 and GPS uh, eventually light scope is also being switched on so let's see if it picks it up I'm wondering it, if it does to be honest drop flaps a bit we 
because we're coming close to the airport. Let's go and look from the uh, back from the aircraft. And let's see if it, what the aircraft does. And here it starts to do weird things. So let's change it to VR2. This kind of weird thing, right? So, not sure what it does currently do. So, it's gonna change it. Oh, here it is. So, it looks like that due to the change we made back to VR 1 and 2, it is something weird. So, we're cleared to land. We've got the GPS, we've got the glide scope. So what does that mean? The light scope will mean that the aircraft will start to descend automatically. That's kind of where it would normally would expect that this one to be log one or log two or so I'm gonna decrease the speed. Then we can look from the outside. And there you see the uh, runway. Right, we're making a little bit weird approach due to the fact that we play around with the VOR button. So if you press the approach and we'll set it to a specific VOR, then I would say recommendation is to let it be what it is. Because it looks like that it's messing up uh, with the uh, direction you're flying to. Here you already see the O from outer marker, which is used by the ILS to I'll let you know, hey, you're flying on the current glide scope. Not all airports do have that. Some of them have. And then it will soon start to uh, ring again, maybe to show us the middle marker. And in some cases, the inner marker. Um, but that really depends on the, uh, let's say, on the uh, airport you're flying to. And so let's uh, switch off the lights. And let's, uh, let's see what the aircraft does. As you can see, based on the poppy lights, we're a little bit too high. Because three of the four poppy lights are burning. Uh, so let's, let's figure out what happens. So we've got the approach. We're gonna move flaps to full. To even further uh, decrease the speed. So we're now almost hitting stall. See it's red, so that's danger zone. decreasing can't see the runway anymore so when we look from the outside we can still see it of course The aircraft's making small adjustments. We always can use the uh, this display, right? Because this display shows us the uh, runway, etc. Although it's a little bit hidden behind the uh, compass. In some case, you can sneak from over the cockpit. So we're at uh, 
and we've landed so again once we are say slowing down slowing down enough we will probably get the instructions to move to uh, or to contact the ground as you can see the red uh, AP is now I would say blinking that's due to the fact that I disabled the autopilot doesn't make any sense to leave autopilot uh, on uh, when I would say taxiing over the runway Exit runway when able. And then we will contact ground. So in this video we looked at the autopilot functionality, we discussed almost all the buttons except the backwards one, which I will discuss in a, another video. Also we'll try to figure out if I can use the VMV one. Uh, but that will be part of a new video which I'm posting. I hope you liked this video, uh, if you liked it then consider to use the like button, if you've got questions or comments based on this video. Then make sure that you are uh, providing that on the bottom of this video because on the bottom of this video there's a comment box which you can use. Uh, in addition to that, if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.